going to talk to you about uh, Mobotic um, because I'm very excited about how mobility is going to shift into uh, what we call uh, abundant peer-to-peer -peer mobility. Uh, but first, I want to go over some trends right now in the market about how the whole mobility landscape is changing. You already heard about AI, uh, but there are several other trends uh, right now happening. Uh, I don't know if some of you are familiar with uh, this situation. I probably have it every morning, uh, and I kind of get uh, annoyed by it. And I think it's time that we start looking at mobility uh, differently to combat uh, this situation. Uh, I always like to compare traffic with uh, the blood vessels in your body. Um, and uh, just like if you eat a lot of hamburgers, uh, your blood vessels get clogged up. It's the same for the roads. Uh, the fact that we are all using inefficient mobility, where we're sitting in a car with three empty seats, clogging up all the space on the road, uh, it's not efficient. Uh, and therefore, if you compare traffic, it's actually the lifeblood of, uh, of our current uh, civilization. So uh, we should start uh, to get things flowing. Um, another thing is, uh, I really feel like we're nearing the end of the road for cars, uh, because cars is really this mindset of individual ownership of a vehicle, and we're shifting more and more towards um, collective ownership of a fleet of vehicles that we can all utilize. Um, and if you look at that shift, uh, the biggest important thing is that right now everything was about selling uh, the vehicles. So it was about scarcity and creating the best vehicle and competing with other companies about this. And with um, the shift towards this collective fleet, we're going to go towards having the best experience while you take a ride. Uh, and this begins in the beginning with uh, maybe some nice music in the background in, uh, in your Uber. Uh, but in the future, uh, I think a lot of uh, other cool stuff is going to happen. Another thing is um, uh, what we see a lot is that there will be a lot of uh, more open innovation towards driving uh, the change for mobility. Instead of all this proprietary and closed uh, innovation, we're going to focus way more on open source and um, uh, using the knowledge of everyone. And this is in the software world already, uh, of course, very successful. And I, I hope we're going to do the same in the hardware world. Um, this is also what I said. I think uh, in the future, uh, we're going to see that we need to take responsibility for mobility collectively. Um, and right now, if you look at the infrastructure in a city, uh, a lot of uh, space is actually wasted on mobility. You have all these parking spaces that are used for vehicles uh, that we're not driving in that moment. We have all kinds of double roads and so on, and this is a massive waste of space. And I think we should claim the space back. Um, another shift is, of course, towards uh, the electric engine and solar. I'm just going to skip over a couple of things. Um, and another very important uh, um, movement is about producing things locally again and using uh, 3D printing and other kinds of other local manufacturing processes to make uh, things locally again. And thereby, I think you're going to get a big shift that uh, it's not just big companies uh, working on vehicles anymore, but it's going to be the crowd. It's going to be people like you and me that want to, uh, um, how do you say it, contribute to the, the future of uh, mobility. And another, another thing is, of course, with the whole solar movement, that energy will become cheaper and cheaper, and therefore mobility will become cheaper and cheaper as well. Another important aspect is that if you look at mobility, um, it's a massive local wealth uh, loss usually for a community. Because uh, every time you purchase a car, you're basically paying for manufacturing in a different region, um, which creates employment there instead of locally. And every time you fuel your car, you're paying a multinational that has a fuel station in your region um, and extracts uh, money. And it's the same with public transport. And I think if we shift this model around, we can uh, really focus all this wealth locally again. Um, and also, if you look at society, I think there's a big difference in uh, access to mobility, uh, the pricing of it, the privacy, and the dependency that you have on other people for your mobility. And I think we should start making this more uh, even for everyone. So we believe it's time for a big change, and uh, that it's time to uh, reset every aspect of our mobility. And that's uh, the story of Mobotic that I want to share with you guys. So here you see uh, some of the prototypes that we currently built. Uh, these are like self-driving pods, uh, one-person vehicles, fully uh, autonomous, hopefully in the next uh, two years. Um, yeah. And we believe that uh, by utilizing the fleet of vehicles, uh, we should get to a point where in any uh, city, distances should feel meaningless. And uh, thereby, you should feel comfortable to live in uh, big cities instead of being frustrated about it. So we built this entire ecosystem uh, for communities like people like you and me to create a network of uh, abundant mobility by building these pods ourselves, financing themselves, and uh, also contributing to the constant development of these, uh, these pods. 
And actually, right now, uh, we're living in a great time because uh, a lot of technologies are coming together. You just heard about, uh, about AI for the, the whole autonomous driving aspect. Uh, people are getting used to the sharing economy, ordering uh, on-demand uh, mobility. And the electric vehicles are uh, improving, batteries are becoming better, and so on. And on the other hand, you have the, the whole movement of uh, the blockchain and local production. Um, and actually, the, the founder of uh, Mobotic, who's uh, sitting uh, right over there, feel free to wave. I would like a big applause for him because uh, it's one of the most hardworking guys I know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, he really believes that it's all about converging all these technologies and um, not so much about trying to invent everything yourself, but really try to, uh, to uh, complement uh, all the research and development of others. So the pot, um, I'm not. Oh, no. <laughs> This is one of the first uh, prototypes. It was a four-wheel uh, pod. Uh, it could shift in the corners, just like uh, the two-wheeled scooters that you have here in Paris. I'm not going to go uh, too far into it. Uh, and then we, uh, we created also a, a three-wheel vehicle. Uh, this is a bit more compact. Um, and actually, the, the platform is generic, and the cabin is just a prototype right now. We will uh, do a design competition in Paris uh, for people to contribute to the, to the final design. Uh, and actually, it's fully built around uh, the passenger, so it's, um, uh, it's human-centric. Um, and we're really driving to make this vehicle as simple as possible, because we want to move towards a, a point where people can start assembling these vehicles themselves. Um, like I said before, uh, we basically look at the vehicle from two aspects. We have the, uh, the generic platform chassis, and we have a, a, a customizable recyclable cabin. Uh, so this will start, of course, with just a, a one-person vehicle uh, and uh, gradually progress towards also uh, delivering packages, transporting food, and the, all kinds of other things. And you can also look maybe at uh, making customized cabins for children or for elderly people. Um, a very important thing about uh, this project is that we leverage the blockchain technology. And uh, I just want to quickly poll who's already enthusiastic about blockchain. Yeah. Yes, OK, I'm very happy to see that, actually. Because we uh, created something uh, pretty cool. Every uh, vehicle that gets produced, uh, it will actually have its own bank account on the, on the blockchain, like a wallet. And therefore, um, all the profits that people pay, uh, or all the, the money that people pay to take rides in these pots, uh, these pots will basically hold in their own bank account. And they will start competing against other vehicles uh, for rides, um, instead of having a central company coordinating all of this. And the next step is that uh, these vehicles, of course, will make way more profit than they just need to pay for all the electricity and the bills and so on. So they will start saving up money until they have enough resources to actually pay for the next pot to be produced. So these pots, they will start having babies, basically. So you will get like a viral effect that the more we drive these vehicles, they will start uh, uh, funding the next generation of vehicles. And they will do this fully autonomously. Uh, we want to manufacture local. Uh, like I said before, I think we're going to see a big shift from global uh, big manufacturing facilities towards local small manufacturing facilities. Um, and actually, we uh, try to get to a point where we have a factory in a box, where we have a sea container with uh, 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 robot arms and um, 3D printers and all kinds of other things, so that we basically have a factory in a box that every time we want to open a city, we can uh, deploy uh, 30 of these containers at the side of the city. We can hire local people to start building them, and thereby we can shift the whole employment for the manufacturing locally. And we want to do this actually in uh, two, uh, two ways. One is uh, to work with the social uh, working places in, uh, in the region. And the other thing is to include schools to constantly learn about these vehicles and contribute to the, the open source knowledge uh, around these vehicles. And of course, we want to use also the local uh, energy, because it's very simple with these small vehicles to get uh, uh, in the neighborhoods and uh, uh, leverage local energy. Yeah. Okay. And all these vehicles, they will start uh, collecting data. This is the same as what Tesla now is doing. Uh, but this is the start that you can start orchestrating traffic also in a different way. So um, for example, when you have certain uh, hours during the day uh, where children would like to play on the street, you can start orchestrating that the uh, vehicles, for example, don't drive in a certain area or in a certain neighborhood. Uh, or you can uh, force them to drive uh, past uh, certain things. Another thing is uh, if you have big events where you need to um, uh, move people around. Uh, you basically have a mobile train that you can program to platoon uh, from uh, one point in the city to another, and thereby not be dependent upon a fixed infrastructure to move uh, people around. 
Um, another thing is that it becomes really easy with these vehicles because you use them uh, through an app to start incentivizing people for who it's difficult to use mobility uh, to not have to pay for things. Um, so for example, children by their parents and then you can program into these pods that they can only go to their grandparents or only to school or all kinds of other uh, destinations that are uh, greenlit. And the same goes for elderly people, that they have uh, still the freedom to move around uh, thanks to these uh, vehicles. So we do this with um, uh, a so-called token on the blockchain. Uh, so there's going to be a smart mobility token. And actually, people can uh, start purchasing these uh, tokens next year. Um, and every time you want to take a ride in one of the vehicles, you, of course, need these tokens. Uh, but people can also earn them. Yeah. So there will be a marketplace for all the tasks around uh, what you need to do uh, to keep this ecosystem going. So people can start earning these coins by charging the batteries, cleaning them, helping uh, make designs, uh, or helping with the manufacturing. And thereby, you get a double-sided ecosystem where it's not just one entity pushing something towards consumers, but everyone feels part of it, and it feels like their own, uh, their own uh, story. So we want to optimize cities because I think we're going to move towards a time where uh, uh, yeah, most traditional vehicles will not be uh, allowed anymore uh, uh, within city centers. And it's way more efficient to focus on, uh, on having pods or other kinds of vehicles and thereby making uh, the streets more safe and um, more comfortable to, uh, to live in. And I think if you get to a point where you always can on-demand uh, ask for, uh, for a ride, uh, you will start drastically reducing the need for bus stops, uh, all kinds of other public uh, transport infrastructure, but also garbage drop-off points and all kinds of other things that you can start shifting to an on-demand uh, model. And I hope thereby we can start uh, taking all these uh, underutilized uh, spaces back again and start making uh, from all these parking spots beautiful places again to, uh, to live in. Uh, and a lot of uh, uh, garages and stuff we can claim back as valuable re real estate inside a city. Um, and I hope that uh, once mobility becomes so cheap and abundant, we can get to a point where also the housing prices in a city become more equal and so on. But this is a, a big dream, of course. So your city, we're right now here in Paris, and actually we chose uh, for Paris to be the initial deployment for, uh, for Mobotic. And we're actually aiming at um, uh, deploying around 2020, 2021. Um, and to give you a sense of the volume of, uh, of uh, money that flows through mobility, uh, I couldn't get the details around uh, the vehicles, but uh, just for public transportation and the taxi infrastructure, it's a massive, massive market. So the more we can take this back towards uh, the local community instead of going to uh, outside companies uh, investing in these things, I think it's going to create a huge uh, wealth uh, shift. So how we're going to do this is by issuing uh, a so-called ICO on the blockchain in 2018 uh, to fund the first 4,000 pods. Uh, and we're estimating right now to do a, a fundraising of 100 million with the community of Paris. And actually, this money doesn't go to us as an organization, but it gets uh, put in a placeholder for the local people of Paris to start manufacturing these things. And we just facilitate the marketplace to start doing this. Uh, so our aim is to start with 4,000 pots, and because these pots will start having babies and they're funded by people that have a community uh, sense and funded it from the start, they will probably get used also pretty quickly. Uh, and thereby, uh, we estimate that in within five years, you can grow to uh, a network of maybe 100,000 pots. And all these pots, they will uh, be individually different instead of just having one standardized pot because they constantly improve. So our big hairy goal uh, would be that we can get to a point where uh, we could offer free mobility for everyone because we start shifting the whole business model around mobility towards the community and not towards a, a, a super centralized profit-focused entity. And um, thereby, we hope that you can live in a community where everything starts feeling close by. Let's make this happen in Paris. Uh, tag on that hashtag Mobotic, and uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah.